a graduate of Harvard University with a law degree from the University of Virginia and a master's in environmental law from Pace University, I would like to welcome Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to the stage. Probably the most rapacious of our history. 
and a public lands and mining industry lobbyist, Stephen Grimes, who believes that public lands are unconstitutional. And head of the Air Division at EPA is utility lobbyist, Jeffrey Homestead, who's represented nothing but the worst air polluters in our country during his entire career. The head of Superfund is a woman whose last job was teaching corporate polluters how to evade Superfund. The second command of EPA is a Monsanto lobbyist. I have an article in Vanity Fair, in this month's Vanity Fair, um, that shows that the top 100 environmental officials of the Bush administration, virtually every one of them, in all of the agencies of government, Department of Commerce, which regulates fisheries, Department of Energy, Agriculture, Interior, the FDA, the EPA, all of them are lobbyists for the, not just for polluting industries, but the worst of the worst, the worst actors within each of those industries. Um, the New York Times did a piece two years ago that's been like, uh, kind of resurfaced over the past couple of days because Waxman's committee is doing hearings on this fellow. This, uh, this, Philip, this character, Philip Cooney, who's the president's number one environmental advisor, and he's the head of the Council on Environmental Quality. His office is in the White House next to the Oval Office. And his job, ostensibly, was to advise the president on, on the environmental impacts of every decision he made. Well, Philip Cooney's last job was his chief lobbyist for the American Petroleum Institution. And as it turns out, his principal preoccupation over the past six years has been combing through every federal scientific document listed by, or issued by all the agencies of government and removing inculpatory or damaging information about the oil industry and the coal industry. He's, he's made hundreds and hundreds of alterations on hundreds of scientific documents. He's not a scientist. He suppressed 12 major studies on global warming that you and I paid for, a taxpayer-funded study. So his lie, his job, was, and there's no other way to say it, there's no nice way to say it, was to lie to the American people in order to protect the profit interests of, of his industry. Um, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with having business people in government. It's a good thing if your objective is to recruit confidence and expertise. But in all of these situations, these individuals, as I, as I show in my book, Crimes Against Nature, have entered government service not to serve the public interest, but rather to subvert the very laws that they're now charged with enforcing in order to enrich the president's corporate paymasters. And they have imposed enormous diminution in quality of life on the people of this country over the past six years. Most Americans don't know about it because we have a negligent and indolent press in this country. That is simply right now